going to give you a quick run through of what I'm going to be taking with me today. I've got my stabiliser here to obviously stabilise the video and any sort of uh, photography, photo shots that I'm going to be taking. I've got my microphone with the bog brush on the end to stop it from uh, any wind interference. I'm also taking my head torch just in case. I don't think I'll need it, but it's just as a, if it, in case I need it. And I've got my um, boost charger because I film everything off my iPhone, so this will help in case my battery runs a bit dead. And you won't be coming with me. It's a proper fucking good day to go and do an explore, isn't it? Absolutely pissing it down. Proper pissing it down. This place here on the left hand side is the scene of a horrific murder and what I'll do is I'll put in a bit of info about it now on the video and link it in but have a little read about that place it's proper interesting but it's got a very sinister past Mother Matt So I've just come to get in the mark, I now and there's not a chance I'll get in. All this uh, staircasing, all the staircasing here has come away. Which there was a set of ladders here that went all the way down there, if you can see. Uh, they've gone. The whole place is just a... Look at that. It's just been uh, battered, but inside I believe it's all sort of... All the crap from the airwell came in. All the sludge and the all the shite basically and it's just destroyed the inside it's a good pub this i've been in it a couple of times and um it's just a, it's just sad to see it in this state and there's loads of access points to get in but i can't actually get down if you know what i mean i can't drop down there because i'll snap my leg but it's sad to see this place in this state This was a good place. Um, I remember as well, the, I think the chef was like a well-known chef and he did a thing called the Manchester Egg, I think. And it's not like your normal Scotch eggs and stuff. I'm not like some um, encyclopedia on fucking Scotch eggs or anything like that, but he made a Manchester Egg and everyone went mad for it. But what a shame, what a shame, I'd love to get in there as well, let me try and zoom in there, look, what a shame, I'll just give you a bit of info about this place as well, it's named after Mark Addy, and he, um, he saved over 50 people out of the sewer, well. people that were what, either like committing suicide or they um, sort of fell in and drowned him and he'd jump in and save him and he's um, quite like a local hero in Manchester and they named, named the pub after him 
I think he's buried in Wee Cemetery as well. But that's a story for another day, isn't it? Such a shame. Try and zoom in there for you. Oh, I'd love to get in there. It's really bugging me, I can't get in. Pissing me off. Oh well. There's always another day, isn't there? So I've just come down these steps here. Um, and I'm trying to get a better shot of like the uh, Mark Addy from the other side of the air well. And I just stumbled across this, I didn't even know that this was here. But I wouldn't even call that like graffiti art, it's sort of just it's just art that. Unbelievable. Peter Lynn. Look at the detail on that. That is brilliant. Uh, wow. And then um, there's a little plaque on here. It says, it says, dedicated to all those whose lives were taken in the first atomic bombings 40 years ago this week in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And to all those who strive to rid the world of nuclear weapons and the threat of nuclear war. That's brilliant. Uh, I didn't even know this was here. Is absolutely brilliant. I'll try and get a little shot from the back of it so you can get the scale of it because this is on a, a massive, probably 30 foot wall. Look at that. And then if we just glance to our right here, we've got this, it looks like it's been hit by an atomic bomb. The Mark Addy. Now if you haven't already go over and watch the Urban Collective's uh, explore that he did of um, he did Manchester, he did all Victoria Station and went on the ground and I only ever knew that as a hairdresser's but it was a, a nightclub and he explored it all and went underground and then went in um, all the like, little secreted and passageways underground for Manchester that lie underneath this Victoria train station here. So. If you haven't already seen it, go over and watch it, it's a brilliant video. So here we've got the Juicy Bridge, another uh, forgotten about pub. It closed its doors a few, a couple years ago now, and... Um, I kid you not, I got a pint of Guinness out of here and I'd never had a pint as nice in my life, I swear to God. If you know your Manchester radio sort of stuff, James Stanage had something to do with it. Not with it closing down, he had something to do with the actual pub. Whether he ran his show from upstairs or something like that, I'm not too sure. But it's just another sorry pub that's going to probably, won't be here much longer will it? What a shame. This was a top top pub. Just gonna have a little read of this sign as well. Yeah, just to say that the one bailiffs have been round. Yeah, the high court. 
Palms East Bridge. Uh, yeah, basically it's just a, from the high court, so the bailiffs have been and probably stripped the insides of it. Um, but it's such a shame. I'll put the link. I'll put a little uh, mess it like a little relay over the bottom of this to tell you how old it were and everything. Maybe put a bit of information about it. But it's just another forgotten pub in Manchester that will be probably. Be good. Well, look at look at the look at what they've done to the uh, Victoria Station over the last few years. Looks like a fucking spaceship. But they'll probably just flatten this at some point and build your local bag of shit building. Little, if you had any earthquakes or anything, they'd just fucking crumble then. They won't last long. But these old buildings have withstanded wars and everything. Check this place out. Look at that. I would love to get in there. All this exploring or mooching about, whatever you want to call it, yeah, making me a little bit thirsty. So I think a nice pint of Guinness will uh, sort me tickly throat right out. <laughs> Discovery Houston press to ATO. So just a quick uh, mooch up into Ancoats, pretty much like you've got Manchester that way, um, and Anita Street, I, I never knew anything about it, watched uh, one of Martin Zero's videos and he did the Northern Quarter, now this was the slums of Manchester basically, and the, the conditions were shocking for people to live in, and they got a bit of a revamp and they ended up becoming like quite good places to live, I think they had like each house had like maybe a bathroom or something like that, which was unheard of. Um, and the last thing you'd expect in the middle of Manchester is a little terrace street like this. And I just think it's absolutely brilliant. That is still exactly how it were. And I'll relay some old um, archive pictures over the top of this. But how cool is that? And eat a street, love it. I'm so glad they haven't knocked something like this down. It's like a little piece of history, just untouched in Manchester. It just feels like there's a, it's a, some sort of like stage set because this is beautiful. This, and then you turn the corner here, and you slap bang in the middle of town. 
but you've got this slight terrace street, it's just dead surreal to me this. But I think it's brilliant. It's like a piece of time that's just not been touched. But it's still dead well kept and everyone's still house proud and stuff, do you know what I mean? It's brilliant isn't it? I love it. You can just sort of imagine like, you know, everyone outside their houses like having a chat and like old housewives and stuff. Kids just playing football and riding bikes down here. It's like some of Corrie, you know what I mean? Like back in the you can just picture it, I can anyway, I can proper picture it just like housewives just having a little chit chat and cups of teas and stuff. And I reckon when the Jubilee were on down here, I reckon it would have been brilliant. Everyone like a proper tight-knit community. And it looks like it's not left it. It still feels like that when you walk down. You can feel the history walking down this street. But I'm so, so glad that there's stuff still knocking about in Manchester like this and it's not just been flattened and some stupid building put there. Or a massive, stinky-ass car park. It's brilliant. 